On this episode, what a day to have just bought a waterproof GoPro session. Hey everyone, and welcome back to ID Anthro on an awesomely wet Brisbane day. Now I just went to film this intro a second ago, it was raining a bit, I realized I needed to check something on the computer and it started pouring, which is incredible. So, you might remember back in episode 52, that's the bit I needed to check, episode 52, I went out in the rain to a creek filtration system, which is a, you know, a form of stormwater treatment system that Brisbane City Council has been building. And I went out to it, had a look at it in the rain, and at that particular moment, I discovered that water was kind of short-circuiting down one side of the system. Well, I went back again today, but this time I went back with my brand new GoPro session camera, which is waterproof, and I went to have a poke around and I focused on the other side of the system. So if you haven't seen video 52, maybe go back and have a look at that, give you some context to this discussion. But I went out today with the GoPro, uh, with the intention of you know, sticking it underneath the water, seeing what I saw. But I also noticed that like last time in the rain, water was preferentially flowing down one side of the system than the other. But today, when I focused more on the dry side, I noticed in one particular spot, there was like a mat of debris, so like leaves and sticks, and it was mainly organic matter, that had kind of like almost formed an almost impenetrable barrier kind of part way across the system and was stopping water getting mostly down it. So these creek filtration systems, you've got to think of them like, I mean, they're effectively a level spreader system. So imagine them a wide flat surface and you want water evenly coming down all sides. I'll do it towards you. Evenly coming through the whole system. And what was happening previously in this system was water was coming in and then stopping at one side and then kind of circuiting around the other. I went there today and realized that on the side where things were slowing up, there was this mat. And so I went and I was like, oh, okay. I reckon it'd be really cool to stick the GoPro on the ground while it's dry and let the water come towards it and see what we see. And so I was like, hmm, okay. I'm gonna try and unblock this mat and I'm going to see how quickly the water moves. I'm going to see if I can get this shot. You know, maybe it'll like, maybe it'll let the water come another meter or so further down the system. Uh, and we'll see what happens. So I did it. And so I'm going to show you that footage just now. We'll edit that in and now. So what you saw there is there was the mat, which I unblocked, then I placed the camera on the ground and the water came rushing down really quite, quite fast. It's kind of got this cool effect as you see it rise up in front of the camera. But what struck me was that blockage was maybe like, it was definitely in the front half of the system. So there was a fair bit of this level spreader to go behind it. And as soon as I removed that one blockage, just how quickly the water flowed through and engaged the entire higher rest of the filter media. Um, and that was me like, oh, okay, I think I just learned something from a maintenance perspective about these, uh, you know, these level spreader type systems, creek filtration systems in Brisbane City Council's terminology. And that was, there's a little bit of extra importance. So I'm a big fan in general in leaving organic matter in these types of systems, in bioretention systems, because I think it's great for cycling carbon back into the systems uh, which is great for plant health and it's like a natural ecosystem cycles carbon through leaf drop and leaf litter back into systems i think it's great for suppressing weeds i think it's great for uh, creating a mulch layer on the surface of the filter media to keep it cool but i was like okay rather than in a bioretention system where my approach is essentially just ignore it and leave it there in one of these more creek filtration systems i think from a maintenance point of view we need to be looking out when we go out there and going okay are there any big build-ups of this matter yeah? Okay, we just need to, we don't need to remove it, we just need to pick it up and kind of throw it around a bit and spread it out a bit so that it doesn't create an impenetrable blockage through the system. And I think if we do that, I think what this, my experience today demonstrates is the system will engage more completely, so instead of just going around the side, more completely with just that little bit of work. 
And so that was a big learning for me today. It's one of those things you can only pick up when you're out there in the rain. So it is what it is. You gotta get wet. Okay, that's it for now. Thanks for tuning into this episode. I'm gonna leave you with a couple of other random shots that I took on the yeah, took on the GoPro while I was out there. I think there's some interesting stuff and I hope you enjoy. Sweet, have a good one.